Hi everyone, I'm Nathan with the ebookreader.com. For this video, I'm going to do a PDF review for the Kobo Aura 1. So, uh, this is Kobo's latest ebook reader. It has a larger 7.8 inch screen, so you would think that that would be beneficial for larger form content like PDFs. Uh, unfortunately, it's kind of hit or miss. Uh, Kobo software isn't the greatest when it comes to PDFs. A lot of uh, other e readers have a lot more capable software, like uh, Onyx e readers, they have a lot more PDF features, and even Kindles have a lot more. Uh, PDF features going for them. So it's really basic. Uh, so let's start with the good things. If you have like a simple text based PDF, uh, it seems to work pretty well. If you have a larger image based PDF, it gets a lot slower. Uh, this PDF right here is like 34 megabytes, something like that. And the page turns are pretty quick. Uh, operation is pretty smooth with it. Um, I have this other one that's 90 megabytes, I'll show later, and it gets really bogged down. It's really slow to use. Uh, but with these, uh, these more uh, text-based PDFs, the smaller size ones, they seem to work pretty well. Um, so uh, you'd think that this larger 7.8 inch screen would be a benefit for the PDFs, but it really doesn't help much. And I'm, I'm gonna show you why right now. The Kindle Paperwhite I have right here, Paperwhite 3, here's a six inch screen, so you get a comparison of the difference between the screen sizes. So the thing with Kobo is, like I was saying, they're uh, PDF software, they don't really put much effort into it because it's mostly just meant to read eBooks from Kobo. Uh, so, I mean, I think the software is basically the same as it was on the Kobo Touch that I re reviewed five years ago. So, nothing has really changed. Um, and the problem is, like this, as you can see, it doesn't do anything for the margin. So, like the Kindle, this is it'll automatically get rid of the margin. So, basically, the text is almost exactly the same size on the 6-inch Kindle as it is on the 7.8-inch um, Kobo Aura 1 at the default setting. So there's no crop margin features, unfortunately, with the Kobo. Uh, so what we can do is we've got a zoom dial right here. Uh, we can use this zoom dial. So if we wanted to get rid of these margins manually, we could uh, increase the zoom level here. It kind of increases too much by using the arrow. So you kind of got to fine tune it by using this. So if we were to get rid of the uh, margins a little bit more like this, then we could center it more by doing the drag. So like that, it actually looks pretty good, right? So we got it quite a bit bigger now than the Kindles, uh, as you can see with the six inch screen, so we've upped it up a bit. We could even get rid of the margins some more there. So problem with that, however, is that when you turn pages, it resets your uh, level up to the uh, top left. So you would have to, so uh, accidentally, it's very touchy when you uh, touch the screen. It's sometimes when you're turning pages, it'll start scrolling instead of, um, you know, turning the page. So as you can see right here, it resets to the top left whenever you turn a page. So then you would have to reset your zoom. So this page it doesn't really matter because we didn't have it zoomed in too far, but usually you'll have like part of it cut off if we zoom in. All right, so you can actually crop, crop the margins if you use the fit the width feature. So you got the fit the width, fit to height options right here. So it kind of does a little bit of margin cropping if you go to the fit to width. Kind of varies depending on the uh, PDF you're using. But it did get rid of a little bit of the margins, not very much, but a little bit. I mean, it's not the same as the Kindle, but uh, the benefit with doing that is then that it will stay it's the centered part of the screen when you do turn pages, even though it barely, hardly at all removes any of the margins. So another deal, uh, another thing you can do for zooming is you can do pinch zooming. And once again, this varies a lot from PDF to PDF, it seems like. So with this PDF, it's not too bad, actually. Um, it's responding as I um, pinch zoom. Um, some PDFs, it is so slow and wonky that it'll stop. It'll start like freaking out and it'll just kind of keep flashing for like five seconds or something. Uh, but with this one, it's not too bad. It, it, it is, it'll work, but like once again, uh, when you turn the page, it will reset. I mean, it'll reset to the top left, so then it kind of messes up where if you had the margins cropped for your page, it would it kind of effectively ruins them because you have to reset every page. So that's kind of the downside with the uh, software on the Kobo. You really don't have any features. You don't have any dictionary. So if you hold down on a word, you're not going to get anything. Uh, you don't have anything like that. The only thing you can do is tap in the top right corner to add and remove bookmarks. Um, and pretty much that's it for features. As far as you know, you can zoom with pinch zooming. You can use this dial right here uh, to zoom in, and you got the fit to width, fit to height feature right here. So. And we've also got landscape mode, which would probably be pretty functional if it just had a little bit more tweaking here. So uh, with this review, I'm talking about entirely Kobo software. This is the software that comes on the Kobo e-readers. Uh, there's another software that you can install called CoReader. Uh, I'll be 
doing a different review for that later. I haven't tried that yet because most people aren't going to be installing you know, different software on this thing. So I just wanted to show the default software first. So let's go ahead and talk about this landscape view. So once we fit it to width, it looks pretty good. Um, we can uh, go ahead and, I mean, obviously you can see the page a lot better. The text fits better that way. The landscape mode generally is a pretty good option for PDFs. The only downside with the Kobo is, is that when you, in the, when you turn pages, it'll go back to the very top. So um, you actually have to scroll down the page manually and it doesn't work too bad, uh, but it tends to drift. It's like really hard to get it to just go down smoothly. As you can see, it's got this black bar on the left because the page will drift. Uh, when you're scrolling, it'll drift from left to right. So it kind of moves around a bit. Uh, that's the only downside with that. So I really wish they just had the page turn so that it would advance down the page. So here we go. Um, the Kindles, for instance, when you switch over to landscape mode with it, um, it, when you page forward, it'll page down the page, so um, it, it's a lot more effective. You don't have to do that scrolling thing because it'll just go down the page automatically as you turn pages here. So it tends to work quite a bit better, quite frankly. Um, and there's really not that much of a difference in text size, once again, um, when you have it in landscape mode, just the way the PDF fits. So yesterday in the comparison review, I noted that the Kobos didn't support hyperlinks, but they actually do. I was just having trouble with it recognizing the touch. You have to be really accurate when you hit the link. Sometimes it'll just turn the page or like it'll scroll instead. Let's see how it works here. Uh, yeah, so that's why I didn't think it worked. Oh, there we go. It just took it a second. Uh, yeah, uh, so yeah, the, the hyperlinks actually do work. And then once you travel to that page, um, you can use this little icon right here, the little previous location to go back to where you were before. So that is kind of helpful for that. Need to zoom this back out. So even on this page, it seems like pages with images or something, I don't know, it seems like it's harder to zoom. Like if we try doing pinch zooming here, it gets a little bit more awkward. It kind of jumps around and automatically stops. I don't know, it gets awkward when there are like images. When it's just text, it seems to work a lot smoother. But when you have like images on the page, or your PDF is image based, uh, the pinch zooming really goes down the drain. So, as far as navigating, we've got this little page dial here with ebooks. For some reason, this, this particular file doesn't work for chapters. If you use the chapter jump link, it, it just continually stays on, uh, on the first page there. Um, whenever I try to jump chapters, it just goes that, back to that, which is kind of strange. Works fine on Kindle, but so yeah, it must be a bug with uh, the software because the the chapter skip thing doesn't work at all with this PDF either. It just uh, it's stuck here at credit. Sometimes I have to push this several times to get it to register as well. The touch touch screen, it just uh, it isn't the most responsive touch screen. I don't know, maybe a little updated here, but sometimes I have to hit things multiple times and it's not always the most accurate. Uh, sometimes I'll hit that button and it'll activate that one, for instance. So yeah, there's definitely some issue with the way table of contents works and the way the chapter skip thing works because it isn't working right on either of these. It just automatically defaults to basically the first chapter. So, so there's no way to add any kind of annotations to PDFs, unfortunately. Uh, just very basic software on Kobo's e-readers. You can actually open up the dictionary if you wanted to do uh, do that, and you can also run a search. in PDFs if you want to search. And we can scroll through the different um, appearances of it. Okay, so um, like I was saying, some PDFs work better than others. Uh, that's just like a 30 megabyte, 34 megabyte PDF. I have this image-based PDF here that's, uh, I think it's about, yeah, it's about 90 megabytes, and this one performs really horribly. It's like, uh, it doesn't usually take this long to load. Yeah, like I said, some PDFs it doesn't really like, really bogs it down. Um, this PDF does work on the Kindle, so I don't know what the deal is. Uh, it does get a little bit bogged down if you're turning pages fast, but... All right, so finally we got it loaded here. Um, let's go ahead and fit this to height so we can see it. And there we go. Um, so this one, it just doesn't really like this particular PDF at all. Um, it's like a you know a textbook type of a PDF. 
and it takes like four seconds to turn pages basically um, so yeah it really gets bogged down if you try to do zooming with this PDF it gets more bogged down as well it just kind of jumps around it doesn't go smooth at all like on the text one when you had the, just the text based PDF it's, it gets a lot smoother with the pinch zooming than this particular PDF so yeah the bigger screen is definitely a benefit but just the way Kobo software works, it doesn't really help a whole lot for PDFs, quite frankly. Um, it's, which is a shame, because the larger screen is nice, but you get all kinds of bugs, and it just does not work very well. And there's just not that many features for PDFs. You don't have any margin cropping features or anything like that. No notes, no highlights. All right, guys, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this review right here. Check out the ebookreader.com for more info. I'll be posting more reviews of the Aura 1 and have a whole bunch of other uh, reviews posted as well. So uh, thank you guys for watching, and you have a good day.